how does type 2 diabetes happen? So you get um, you eat carbohydrates, you get glucose in your blood. The um, process of de novo lipogenesis in the liver turns it into fat. And that fat starts getting deposited all around the body. So I've talked about it getting deposited in the, the lipocytes. Yeah? But it also gets deposited back in the liver. Okay? So your liver starts getting fat. And that's called um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So alcoholic fatty liver disease used to be the biggest problem. Now we've the, that's been surpassed um, recently by non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So, so the liver gets fat, but then we've got that other fellow that I'm drawing a pancreas here that sits beside the liver, kind of in here, and that starts getting fat. Okay, so your pancreas starts getting full of fat, and that starts to affect the function of the pancreas. But before that, okay, so that starts getting fat, and insulin levels go up, and insulin levels go up, and insulin levels keep going up, so we're getting hyperinsulinemia. But after a little while, the body just gets frustrated by the high insulin, and the body starts to become resistant to the um, high levels of insulin. So um, to think of an um, analogy, um, I'm thinking of the archetypical um, husband who is nagged by his wife, and um, maybe at the beginning of their relationship, and um, she says to him, um, bring the wood in and he'll do it. And then uh, after a few months, she'll say, bring the wood in, and he'll say, well, just after I've um, finished watching this game. And then after a few more months, she'll say, can you bring the wood in? And he'll, um, he just didn't hear her, because he's going deaf, isn't he? So, so he didn't hear. And that's the process of um, nagging resistance. You know, that's, that's, he's, he's become resistant to the nagging, and so she has to start talking a bit louder for him to be able to hear before he'll bring the wood in. And so she'll say it louder and more often, the insulin level goes up, you know, and he becomes more resistant, um, and he doesn't hear, and so you can see where that goes. And eventually, he just says, no, nah, I'm having nothing to do with this, and he um, doesn't do it at all, and um, despite the loud talking and the repetitiveness of that talking, nothing gets done and the fire goes out. So. Similar sort of story with the insulin, you get the tissues become resistant to the high levels of insulin. But the body just keeps pushing and um, on the subways in Japan, they employ people that push commuters into the train. So they're actually called subway pushers. So the train is full, but there's too many people out on the um, platform. So they literally go behind them and they force them into the train so the train doors can close. And that's, that's what's happening with the hyperinsulinemia, just getting higher and higher levels of insulin, more and more insulin resistance. And this goes to the point where the pancreas just can't produce any more insulin and the pancreas starts to fail. So when the pancreas starts to fail, that's when you start to see your blood glucose go up and your HbA1c go up. That's, that's probably because you're getting fat um, deposited in there and it's via this process of hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance. Um, and then as the pancreas um, loses more and more ability to produce insulin, the situation gets worse and worse and the, diet and the sugars go up and up. That's type 2 diabetes and um, that's why I'm saying it's crazy to give more insulin in that situation. What we've got to do is go back and deal with the cause of the problem and the cause of the problem is right up here with, with what we're eating. So that's the process of type 2 diabetes. And